Hey guys, Yvonne Blasquez here, Certified Personal Trainer. So um, this is a follow-up from my previous video on good versus bad carbs, guys, the science of good versus bad carbs. And essentially what I want to say is um, I've come up with a ratio uh, that I think can kind of be more practical use, 15%, uh, okay? So we have the American Heart Association that was 10%. So 10% of the uh, total carbs of whatever food it is should be at least should come from fiber, so 10%, okay? Dr. Greger has a 5 to 1, which is 20%. So 20%, I think that's a little high. Uh, I think it's good, it's stringent, but it's, I think it's a little high. Uh, so I came, what, came up with 15%. Now, the confusion was how do we express this in, in a fraction form or decimal? Well, for me, it has to be, uh, my, my fraction actually includes a decimal because it's simple, like one to 10, or I'm sorry, 10 to one is 10% and five to one is 20%. That's easy to remember. Mine is 6.6 .6 to one. That's not as easy to remember, but precisely speaking, 6.666, and you know run on that actually equates to 15 percent and if you go back to my last video that i did on the science of good versus bad carbs a lot of the foods that i were um that i was comparing like particularly like the high carb low fat vegan staple foods that are you know kind of i've seen popularized is white potato bananas and uh and rice so when we look at those three foods all of them were higher than 6.6 okay um, and then the foods that I compared them to in terms of, you know, better uh, choices when it comes to trying to promote fat loss and, and also maybe optimizing glycemic control and so forth and a whole host of other aspects and benefits. Uh, the ones that I compared them to were all under 6.6. .6. So when I compared the white potato to butternut squash and, and uh, spaghetti squash, both of those were under 6.6. .6. And it's interesting because, you know, it, it's... At the time, I wasn't thinking about it, but I was just I was just indicating that the lower the ratio, the better, and the higher the ratio, the worse uh, in terms of that fiber to starch ratio. Um, and also, when when I compared fruit, banana versus blueberry and raspberry, uh, blueberry was 5.8, which is under 6.6. .6. I think banana was like it was like um, 8 point something. Uh, let me just double check that. It was 8.8. Um, by the way, I'm going to have some charts, uh, little little PowerPoint slides, guys, just uh, illustrating some of these ratios. But essentially, 15% fiber rule means that you take the total carbs, you divide it by the fiber, and if the result is 6.6 .6 or less, it gets a thumbs up. If it's 6.6, .6, or if it's higher than 6.6, .6, then we need to you know, question it. Now, that being said, there are some caveats, and let me just give you an illustration of two. Again, this, this rule isn't immune to scrutiny, but at the same time, it's a fascinating carbohydrate quality metric, and so I wanted to kind of you know, um, illustrate some of the some of the practical usage of it, and maybe kind of translate it for you. But basically, give, let me give you two two exceptions. Number one, avocado. Avocado is 1.2 on the ratio. I think it was like nine grams carbs, seven grams fiber. That's pretty remarkable. Now it's got 15 grams of fat, and it's also higher in calories. Again, I'm not saying avocados. I'm a big fan of avocados, but we're not going to just eat them like you know, like like a whole bunch of like eating like berries. So obviously there, there's, there's exceptions to the rule, okay? Um, avocado is a phenomenal low carb fruit. It's technically a fruit, but it's higher in the, in the calorie side. Again, it's a very nutrient dense, high fat fruit, but again, the calories are high, so that, it's a calorie caveat. So eat it, eat it sensibly, eat it prudently, okay? Now, what's the other um, caveat? The other caveat is, and I'm, I'm just giving two examples, guys. I mean, if I, if I had the time and, you know, and the resources, I would obviously, I would, you know, I could analyze all of these foods. Cantaloupe is 8.8. .8. Um, it came out at about 8 grams for 100 grams. It came out at 8 grams of carbs and 0 0.9 grams fiber, which is 8.8. .8. But the calories per 100 grams is 34. Um, so that's, that's actually really good. And so, um, Basically, what that means is, basically, what that means is, it's a high water content food. It's not very high in fiber, but it's very calorie dilute. So, it conversely from the avocado, the the, the cantaloupe would not pass the 6.6 .6 or less rule, but it's an exception to the rule because it's so low in calories and it's so uh, you know high in nutrition. So again, there are, there are going to be a few exceptions here or there. But that being said, it's an interesting um, it's an interesting metric to apply. So with that, uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and uh, tune in next time.